All right, so talking about quarks, um, so we've explored other properties of atoms, and when it started colliding, things were falling out here, bonding, and they were forming these, these exotic particles, things that we didn't, don't normally see in nature, like pions, K, mesons, um, other different forms of barons, and all sorts of different things like that, start falling out of nature. So they say, oh, look, I'm ending up with these particles. I've never seen these particles before. Okay, so, excuse me one sec. So talking about quarks, I'm going to first just give you what quarks are. So I've got first, second, and third generation of quarks. The first generation are the most common quarks in the universe, the up and the down, okay? And now we refer to these up and down, strange charm, bottom and top, as the flavor of quark. So when you hear the word flavor referring to quarks, they're talking about up, down, strange, charm, top, bottom. Okay? So those are the flavors of my quarks. Now, those flavors, those flavors have particular values for it. Spin, charge, and uh, there's other things like mass values that are, that are in here, um, which is measured in electron volts, because nobody's really measured the mass and mass of a quark. There's other properties that are associated with each one of these. But I'm just going to concentrate primarily on the spin and the charge, because you know, in all honesty, the important thing is being able to create a proton and a neutron with up and down spins, where the other ones are not as important, but they're worth mentioning. So you can see that the upcharge has a half spin, and it also has a hypercharge, which means it's two-thirds charge, compared to the down, it has a half spin, but it's a negative one-third charge. So one-third is our typical size charge, which isn't all that typical, because 50% of them have hypercharges. The other 50% have this one-half, this one-third charge. So that's what separates an up and a down, is this property here, like I said, there's other mass values. But for up and down, I think they have the pretty much close to the same mass. Okay, so plotting this with x and our charge on my y and spin on my x, I can see that my up, my charm, and my top belong in this corner, experiencing a hypercharge, all with a half spin. Where my, my anti-particle, my anti-up, my anti-charm, my anti-top, all those are exactly opposite of the original particle, which means that they have a negative two-thirds charge and a negative one-half spin. Okay? So they're on the other coordinate, they're on the other side of the graph. Where dealing with my other particle, my down, my strange, my top, they belong over here with one half of a negative one third. <laughs> the anti has a negative one half charge and fits in the positive one third. Okay? So that's the basic structure of quarks. Here's my first generation, my up and down, my second generation, strange and charm, my third generation, top and bottom. And the reason why we call it first, second, and third is because first generation tends to live longer, second generation not so much, and then third, it's very hard to keep those around for any length of time. Okay? Cool? So that's the basic structure of it. Now I'm going to go into a little more detail about, about, about addition, how to add quarks together in order to get what I'm 